New York's Classic Rock, Q1043. We have in the studio with us James Murray, known lovingly and affectionately by his gazillions of fans as Murr from uh, the hit TV and movie franchise, Impractical Jokers. And uh, by the way, he guessed as well, and he was wrong. Yes, I did. Uh, can I say my guess? I thought it no, was. Uh, no, no, I can't, can't say it. my guess. No, you can't, can't say your it. guess. Darn it! Uh, okay, but, but you, you were... see how I got to my guess? Yeah, the beginning sounds a little bit like right, that. Yeah, right, right. Which is the game? Well, I it guess. sounded a little bit. It did sound a little bit like Born to Run, which it's yep. not. No, but, uh, that that was. I do not qualify for the one million dollars. Sorry. So you. We'll... By the way, Jim, I have to tell you, by the way, I got a very sweet text on the way here from my dear friend Chris Curie saying, James, you have to let Jim Kerr know that you're the only thing that gets him to work every day and puts him in a good mood. Nice. Like he listens to you every morning, and he said, please send my love. So there you go. There's there's his love. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Now, that is like, that is like how a guest should behave, uh, <laughs> uh, 101, right well, there. Well, you know, uh, you're, of course, a television and, and movie star. But you're also an accomplished author, and we'll get into your new book in just a moment. But you, we get a lot of guests up here. Yeah. A lot of famous people come up here. Of course. You never know who you're going to bump into in the hallways. Yep. You are here at the mighty headquarters of iHeartRadio New York. Yes. The and tallest building in New York City. <laughs> well, not quite, but it's certainly, the, it's certainly the most solid building in New York City. It's hard as a rock. Yep. Uh, but when word spread through the floor that you were coming here, all of a sudden, there are other radio stations on the floor, other iHeart radio stations on the floor. All of a sudden, there were four stations that wanted you yeah. as a guest yeah. on their shows on the same morning, and you're going to do that. I, I go back to back to back to back okay, to back. Okay, but that is really unusual. Really? Yeah, that yeah. means yeah. that your appeal uh, you know, is, is so broad that it crosses genres and age groups and stuff like that, and it must make you feel really, really proud as to what you've been able to accomplish. It's certainly not sex appeal, that's for sure. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's not <laughs> sex appeal. <laughs> <laughs> well, well I, I tell you what, uh, there, I, I've said this to you before. Obviously, I'm a f huge fan of the show and of you personally. Uh, you're uh, one of the best interviewers out there. Uh, your career is legendary. And there's very few folks I would wake up at four in the morning to get here from South Jersey to do an interview for than you. you I've said this before to you in the studio. Well, well, thank you. You know, there's something weird about Princeton. Yeah. <laughs> okay, because Princeton University is such a prestigious academic institution that I've come to believe that everyone who lives in Princeton, even if they don't have anything to do with Princeton University, is by nature a really brilliant person. Just a little bit smarter? Yes. I, I, yes. I, 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 just, I get that feeling. You know, it's when strange. It, you have to take an IQ test to buy a house in the neighborhood. It's weird. When yeah, I, well, you're right. As soon as you hear Princeton, you're like, oh. Right. When yeah. I, I, and I've only passed through Princeton like twice in my life. And both times I got the vibe. Yeah. Like, oh, this is where smart people are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the hallowed halls. Yeah. Uh, and, but, but you're a Staten Islander. Through and through, forever yes, and ever. But I worked hard to lose the accent. So, <laughs> <laughs> but they have better pizza on Staten Island than they do in Princeton. They do, but there is an Italian pizzeria in Princeton that is as good as Staten Island or Brooklyn or Manhattan pizza for sure. Really? Wow. They, they, yeah, okay. They, That's the guy comes a lot. from Brooklyn and moved down there, and and it's called D'Angelo's. So you know, it's got the name to go along with it, and is as good as Staten Island pizza. All right. Well, you have something. Uh, well, pretty big coming up on Saturday, April 2nd. Okay, this is a supersized special episode of Impractical Jokers that will be simultaneously broadcast on three different networks. And it will begin immediately after the NCAA Men's Final Four game is played. Yes, it's going to air on C-SPAN, uh, ESPN 8, and uh, no, True no, TV. No, 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 no. It's going to be on True TV, <laughs> TBS, and TNT. Yes, correct. Okay, but so you get some eyeballs big but time. But it's, right it's right after the final. Yep. The, the, the second the game ends, they cut to our 
faces, our, our, our ugly mugs, <laughs> are trying to make yuck yucks. You know, think about that. Talk about talk about a time period that people would covet that performers, producers, directors, writers, creators of TV. This is like Seinfeld Friends. Would like lose yeah. their minds over and they gave it to you guys. Yeah, I mean, if, if the game goes into like triple overtime, you're going to watch a brand new episode of Impractical Jokers at 1.40 a.m. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be fantastic. Be positive. Come on. <laughs> so you've done this, obviously. It's in the can, right? It's done. I mean, the first episode is fantastic. It's uh, the way the show works now is that every episode ends with a different celebrity guest as part of the punishment, somehow mm -hmm. involved in punishing the loser. Mm -hmm. So the first episode is uh, the comedian Eric Andre, uh, who's hysterically funny, and he punishes Sal. Uh, tomorrow we film with Brooke Shields in a punishment. I'm very excited. Nice. <laughs> we have uh, one episode has Method Man. Uh, in oh, the punishment, yeah. Chris Jericho, the wrestler, is in a punishment. Is Colin it Method Joe's. Man from like? Where is he from? Uh, Staten Island. That's right. Wu -Tang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wu -Tang. yeah. yeah well, it, it, how difficult is it to recruit? You know, this big name talent. Well, that's the reason I really came here. Is not to talk about the book, uh, Jim. Are you free next Thursday? Is what I really what I was kind of getting at. Wow! Because I tell you what. Well, I'll actually, no. I have a Zoom meeting at noon. <laughs> oh next. shoot! It's oh, he's got to wash yeah. his car. Oh, I'll he tell you have what. We could probably come up with a great punishment with you. You know what I mean? Like maybe it's some kind of uh, like I, know I you, like you, it. I knew you did a, a, a kind of a charity or awards kind of event the other day with Rosanna Scotto, who yes. her and I spoke about you uh, for ten minutes uh, two days ago on Good Day New York, and, and uh, I bet you we can come up with some kind of great Great idea. It's 12 minutes after 8 o'clock, and we'll be right back <laughs> at Q104.3. And James Murray, who is Murr uh, from Impractical Jokers, is here with us this morning at Q104.3. Back live in the studio again. Our last couple of encounters were over Zoom, yep. uh, you know, which is has turned out to be extraordinarily useful, especially during the past two years. But damn, I hate it. I'm sick of it. Oh, I'm over it. I really <laughs> yeah, am. You totally. know, and I still have too many Zoom meetings. Yeah, it makes, yeah. It makes me nuts. Isn't it nice to be able to... It's good to see your face again, Jim, But to honestly. get back on the road, because you, you're out entertaining people now again. Yeah, uh, all my tour dates are on MurLive.com. I'm playing Long Island at the Huntington uh, Paramount. Beautiful uh, theater. June 10th. Oh, yeah. Have you been to the theater? Oh, I was just there the other day. I oh. popped in to surprise fans at Joe Gatto's show. It was great. Okay, because because that is a beautiful theater. So nice. And the speakeasy downstairs is amazing. Really? Yeah, they have this whole underground for members only. I'm not a member. That I don't want to be a member of any club that'll let me be a member. Right, right. But did they let you in? <laughs> they did. I talked. I, 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 you know, I, my wife is very, very beautiful. So they, they there you go. Say, but yeah. did your nice. wife also say, by the way, my husband, this man over here, is going to headline here in this theater very soon, and it would be really nice if you let him in. They're, did she pull any strings? Or they were too did she busy get looking at her. Beauty I, I just followed in her shadow behind, and I got in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I understand. Now, now, uh, your sixth book is very, very different from right from your your previous work. And by the way, <laughs> you've been a best selling author, not just an author. You've been a best selling author, uh, and this book is for young people specifically. And it's called Area 51 Interns. Yes, it's about a uh, group of kids uh, going into their summer be uh, before freshman year of high school. Uh, it's the first day of summer, and uh, it's Take Your Kids to Work Day. And their parents just so happen to work at the infamous Area 51. So they go to work with their parents, and of course the aliens get loose in the first book. All heck breaks loose, and the adults get captured, and it's up to these four best friends to save the day every single book. It's a three-book series. First one just came out the other day. Uh, and then book number two comes out in October, and that's about mythical creatures. Book number three next March. I'm going to see you so many times, Jim. In the next yeah, well, <laughs> it's, it's published by Penguin Workshop, and you can go to penguin.com slash kids. But the uh, it actually, on the uh, dust cover... Uh, has an age recommendation. The age range is from 8 to 12. That's about right. Uh, that does not, however, preclude adults from getting into the story as well because it sounds like a really cool premise. It's super cool. It's very, very funny. Kids will love it. Uh, and there's lots of Impractical Joker shout-outs in the book, which I think fans will love too, adults or kids 
uh, the same. And uh, yeah, and then we are developing it into a live action TV show at the same time. Oh, f- uh, that was my question next. Yeah, now I, I want to see that. Now your co-author is Carson Smith, and this is her first book. It is. She's smarter than I am. That's for darn sure. Uh, she, uh, yeah, she. Yes, I live in Princeton. I didn't go to Princeton. I live in Princeton, but she went to Vanderbilt and is a Jeopardy. Yeah, Nashville. She too. went to Vanderbilt in Nashville. That's uh-huh. another one of those real smart Vandy yeah. places. Yeah, yeah. And she's a Jeopardy champion too, and a comedy writer, and, and uh, ran development from a company for many years. And she's very, very talented. And uh, so you and she collaborated on this book during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. So you were Zooming. Uh, like you, Jim, I am sick of Zoom meetings. You know how hard it is to write a book on Zoom? Well, that's what, it, that's, that's what I want to know about. I mean, you're, you collaborated on this project. You managed to produce a, a book that is getting really great reviews. Um, and you couldn't even get together and... No, it was all done uh, virtually, literally. You know, it's Area 51 technology. The yeah, right. To write a book in the future on Zoom. <laughs> I'm just flipping through the pages here. They did a nice job with this. They did a great job. Uh, they, even better is the uh, when you take the jacket off, the, the actual cover of the book is fantastic. Okay, let's take it. Uh, yeah, and if you'd like an autographed oh. copy, go to Area51novel.com, and I'll send one from my house to your house. Okay, Area51novel.com. Mm-hmm. All right, so who who are the protagonists in this story? You've got Vivian Harlow, who's the leader of the group right there. She's the uh, She finds out in the first book she might be part alien. Her uh, crush is Elijah to the left, wearing the combat suit. Okay. Her best friend Charlotte, an Australian girl. And Ray, uh, on the right, is the comedic sidekick. He's the goofball of the group. He's the me or Sal or Joe or Q of the group, basically. Okay, here, do you, do you, here take a look at the, yeah, yeah. the cover there. Those are... Those are the characters. Yeah, if you've got kids or no kids, they'll love the book. Now, you you talk about uh, taking this into uh, television Mm -hmm. or some video uh, format. Do you imagine it as being live action or animated? Uh, It could be either, but the company we're working with would like to develop it as a live action. And they're a great uh, kids TV production company called Nine Story. So that's how we're going to develop it. But don't worry, Jim. Yes, these are it's a three-book series to start. The idea is that, like Goosebumps, it would be many, many books. But uh, we just the other day sold another thriller that will come out the end of next year uh, about a serial killer. It's a serial killer novel set during Christmas time, and it's called You Better Watch Out. So oh, you, what a great title. I'll be back to adult fiction in no time. Yeah, I but promise. what a great title. Thank you. you, you True crime, out. so unpopular. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, but by the way, did they call you James when you were young? They called me Murr mostly, but my friends call me James too. No, but I mean, did they always call you James? You were never a Jim. You know, my dad is Jim or Jimmy, so okay. you know. All right, because the only time I've ever been called James is when someone's mad at me. Yeah. You know, like a school James? teacher. Yes, yeah, a school teacher. Are you named after your father? No, no, no. What was your dad's name? But, but I mean, I mean, Jim. I'm Jim, so that's Jim. James. I mean, I'm, you know, my passport says James. Yeah. You know, you need a passport to buy a pack of cigarettes at Walgreens if you're... Oh, wow. Well, I, because I don't have a driver's license. Yeah. You don't? No. Why? I, I, because I've never had a... I live in Manhattan. I've never had a driver's license. Do you have... You don't have a light... You don't know how to drive? No. <laughs> but you don't have, like, a, a, a state ID? No, I have a United States passport. You're off the grid. Okay, but at, at at Walgreens, I didn't realize that. And look, at I know that smoking is bad and it's horrible and I'm stupid. I get it. Uh, but I, I went to go buy a pack of cigarettes because they sell them there. And come on, let's be real. I'm not under 18. Right, bag. yeah. Okay, but they had I had to show ID. Y- you know, uh, so I, I had I, to go home and get my passport and show it. So you carry your passport with you at all times? Uh, no, I had to go home and oh, get my you had passport. To go, can I show passport. you something, by the way? Yeah. I, I, I uh, There was an episode of Impractical Jokers where they shaved off Q's hair, and they made me, uh, they made it into a wig. It was like 12 inches long. And they made me go to the passport office and get a new passport with his hair. <laughs> I happen to have it on me. I just handed it to Jim. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That is. <laughs> Show, put it on the camera. Okay, so oh, what? Block my details, please. So what happens <laughs> when, you, when you're trying to uh, uh, 
go through an international t- boundary with this. I'll tell you what, I look like a see something, say something. You know, that's what I look like. I'm trying to block my, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. I happen to have it because I was on TV the other day with it. So it's uh-huh. still in my bag. Well, I have. Uh, so it was such a pain having to get my passport to do stuff. So yeah. I got one of these. This is a passport card. Oh. Okay, yeah, that you, that you can, you put can in get your both wallet. now. You can but, get the, but when yeah. you go to a source, people have never seen this in their, in their life. They're oh, like, they get real fake. confused. But, yeah, they don't know what but that there is. It is. But there it is. So, cool. so when you're writing a children's book, uh, I would imagine that you know you have to try to reintroduce yourself to the to the kid who lives within, in order to figure out what's fun and and interesting you know because obviously you're you're a grown up now but the kid is still in there somewhere you yeah. just have to find the kid i find i find the kid every day on the set of impractical jokes oh, yeah. you know i mean gosh I, you know, i've known these guys for 32 years uh, when we met in freshman year of high school so it's not hard to tap into that for sure what was hard was changing uh the creative process from writing thrillers to going into a kids book series, you know, like we did, a, we wrote, finished the book. And then I read through, it was like, Oh my God, we need to add lots more jokes. Like I, you, you gravitate toward the drama and the cliffhang. And when you're like, when you're writing adult fiction and you're like, shoot, kids need to laugh. You right. Know? Right. And uh, you're going, and I'm just taking a look here. You're getting really good reviews on this and people are buying it for libraries yeah, and, how and cool is that? I went uh, last week to, uh, I did like 16 classrooms and, and auditoriums in Long Island and Jersey, actually seeing, and it was it, like kids that were just finally able to take their masks off, mm-hmm. literally like three weeks ago in schools. So they were, they went bananas when we walked in and, you know, they, they haven't had a visitor to their school in two years, you know, it was a lot of fun. Well, at the real Murr on Instagram, two R's on Murr, of yeah. course, uh, at James... S. Murray. S. Murray <laughs> on Twitter. So there's two you, S's. James you you create these social media accounts before you're on TV. And then when you get on TV, you're like, shoot, I'm stuck with this stupid. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> if, if you find at James Murray, it's like a butcher in Ohio. <laughs> Seriously. Well, yeah. it's, it's Area 51 interns, mm-hmm. Alien Summer. And it is uh, published by Penguin. And once, once again, how can people get a signed copy uh you can go anywhere books are sold to get a copy the audiobook is excellent by the way and uh if you'd like an autograph copy from me uh i will send it out to you i'll lick a stamp and put it on on an envelope <laughs> and i'll uh, go to area 51 novel.com area 51 novel.com uh james s murray Murr, <laughs> it's always a pleasure to have you here with us at you q104.3 too, great you just want to remind our friends saturday april 2nd a special episode. The new season doesn't begin until June. So this will be Saturday, April 2nd, immediately following the NCAA men's Final Four game. Uh, Impractical Jokers on True TV, <gasps> TBS, and TNT, all at the same time. And C SPAN. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much Thanks for, for having me, by. guys. New York's Classic Rock, Q1043.